Hey guys, today we are going to talk about a card that has recently spiked, Stronghold Gambit. It is a rare from a very undervalued set, a set that honestly if you open a boost pack you're pretty much looking for a foil common, is Nemesis. So Stronghold Gambit. It's $4.99 right now, it has recently spiked, it was $0.32 cents a long time ago, it was it spiked to a dollar and then it went down from a dollar and has just kind of gone down since Kaladas. Uh, whenever you look at cards like this, so what the card does, it's one in a red and you get to cheat a creature in play, but however you pick a creature in your hand, your opponent picks a creature in his or her hand and you show it to each other and then the one with the creature with the lowest mana gets to put it into play. Now this is very good against decks that don't have creatures, obviously, right? And those controly decks, those top decks, a lot of times control decks used to run Talmogoyf in Legacy, but they don't do that anymore. And it's because Talmogoyf is not as good anymore and you want to lock them out. So the Miracles deck, there's a lot of decks that their starting hand may not have a creature in it. So you get to play your Emiko, you get to play... And even in ED8s, um, at my play group, there's one guy, his name is Bill. He plays a deck that's just counter spells. I don't believe he has any other creature except for his commander, which is uh, Azumi Lady of Scrolls, I believe is the commander he has. It's some weird Kamigawa one. Anyway, it is crazy because there's, n yeah, that's the one. And then you can tap wizards to draw a card, but he doesn't have any other wizards. And I think he's only doing it because he has a really nice foil copy of it. Regardless, uh, when you talk about cards that can put other cards into play, you have to take a very close look at it. And this one escaped me, but for all reasons I just stated, it would have been an excellent speculation. Uh, two mana for a possibly putting an Emiko or a, a Grizzle brand into play against certain decks from the sideboard. I mean, some cyborg cards are 15, 20, 45 dollars even. So I don't, I mean, 32 cents or even under a dollar, it's a very good deal, especially if you're playing a, you're just making a deck. So one of the things that I look for when I'm trying to speculate on cards, I'm trying to give you a little bit more analysis and personal insight is whether or not the card does something incredibly strong and does that strong item, can it get stronger in time. So when Nemesis was reprinted, <laughs> the creature base didn't have Grizzle Brand, it didn't have Emiko, and it got stronger in time. That's the same for like Tamagoyf. Tamagoyf didn't have Planeswalkers as a card type, and now it does. It didn't have the Goblin Tribal cards, the Tar Fire, Tar Pit as a card, and now it does. So keep your eyes on something that's both cheap or free. Free is better than cheap. Uh, in terms of mana cost or if there's an alternative mana cost as well as does it do something very strong and even if that unique strong thing it does isn't very good right now is it scalable sometime in the near future will the card become stronger because something is reprinted causing the spike so when you look at vampire hex maids for instance or i'm um, not even vampire hex maids it's the other one it's the 2020 indestructible Dark Depths. Yeah, if you look at Dark Depths, it's a 2020 indestructible for land and adds counters on it. It's like bulk. It was 50 cents. But you look at it and you say to myself, huh, what could make this card non-bulk? And you might say, oh, it's Vampire Hex Maids. It could be that or it could be the stage. And I believe it was Gate... I keep wanting to say Gate Watch, but it's Gate Crass. The uh, Fespian stage, which allowed you to remove counters. Of course, things will allow you to remove counters. That's just how things are in Magic the Gathering. Of course, you when you are able to put out big fatties on turn two, that's the big fatties will only get better. I guarantee you, next two years, we'll see a card better than original Amico. The new Amico is good, but I think I still believe the original one's better. But I guarantee you, we'll see a card better than Tomogorf in definitely the next four years. We'll see a better card than Lily of the Veil. Vale. That's how power creep, because if we kept like playing with weaker cards and no one would continue the game because they would be like, oh, I don't want to buy weak cards that don't have any long lasting impact. I mean, Aldrazi, take the Aldrazi. I would have never imagined that we would get creatures on the level of Aldrazi and the whole colorless thing is 
not a negative in my opinion. It wasn't the drawback that they wanted it to be. Anyway, this is my analysis of the card. Uh, leave me a comment below if you have some of these in your binders. Do you agree? What other cards would you want me to look at? I'm definitely interested in doing cards pre-speculation and there will be a certain princess I will try to make a video on tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow obviously is still work day and but there is a princess that I like a lot. Anyway, bye guys.